So you can see, I was able to gut the deer last night. This is my second deer of 2019 with the same buck knife that I, I gutted a deer with last month. I just bought this last month and it had the factory, the factory uh, sharp sharpness on it, sharpening, whatever you want to call it. And I attempted to sharpen the tip to make it easier to, to puncture and to, to slice. And I really did a really lousy job sharpening it. Fortunately, the, this part was sharp enough. So the knife, I've used it to open boxes and do a few other things since. And even though it's more dull than in November, I was still able to, to gut the deer. Now I'm going to try to use it the next day to trim the hide off of there so I can quarter it. I don't really have a, a camera person here to help, so... I'll try to shoot this in segments and we'll see how well it works out. So ordinarily I would hang the deer upside down and I would start at the leg and trim the the hide and peel it and kind of let gravity help me peel it. But I had to hang this one right side up to let it drain out last night and by myself it was kind of a pain. So I'm going to do this the hard way. And I'm going to just try to peel the hide off in sections. Okay, I used a sawzall with a wood blade to cut the hind leg there at the joint. So I'm trying to cut through this membrane here without damaging any meat and remove the hide. So it's a little bit difficult. But let's see how far I get. Okay, so I've been real careful just trying to fillet and get through the, the membrane. It's it's a real slow process because I'm trying not to damage the meat and then in the process I found this where is it like right here I scored a third hit with the Henry see my finger right there so I've got to cut out a bunch of damaged meat there in the uh, right rear leg there but that's Three hits with the Henry, one in the chest, one in the ribs, one in the leg, and then one hit with the 1911 right through both eyes. So, I'm, I'm, I, I really don't like the meat being damaged, but I'm, I'm pretty happy because I, I thought that third shot I, I missed completely and I didn't. So as you can see, I was able to just fillet back the hide to expose the meat. And uh, I made a mistake there. I cut into some meat, but we're going to have to do some cutting around on this anyhow. And I'm trying not to do anything where I screw up and get in there and mess up the tenderloins. But I'd say even with a duller blade, this buck knife is, uh, is uh, exceeding its expectations for me. And I will get it sharpened before deer season next year. But I thought I'd go ahead and just try it out and see if I was able to do it. This this is a slow process, uh, partly due to my inexperience, partly due to uh, the dull blade, and partly due to the fact that I've got the deer right side up instead of upside down. But that's okay. I've got all day. Thanks for watching. So hopefully you got an idea that if you're new to hunting or you're not really a knife person like me and you want to get a quality American-made knife for an affordable price that you can gut a deer with in the field and skin a deer with once you get it back home, the Buck 285 Bantam will do the job. There are probably a lot better knives out there and me not being a knife guy, I can't really recommend anything else. I've used other people's knives in the past, but I never asked what model number they were or anything like that. So this is me jumping into handling this myself and, and learning. And I wanted to get a quality American-made knife, but I didn't want to break the bank. This was fairly affordable. It came with the 283 Nano, which is really kind of nice. And I thought I was going to need this to get into tight spaces, but I really didn't use it still Though I like having the option of having this smaller knife if I do need it. And I have used it for other things in the month or so that I've had it. Now unfortunately in the process of skinning the deer. I believe I threw the 285 out with all the, all the parts of the deer that I didn't keep. So it's long gone unfortunately. But fortunately 
I can order it directly from the Buck website and get it in the Mossy Oak Blaze camo pattern instead of just the plain orange that I would get at Bass Pro Shop. So I'm looking at this as an opportunity for me to buy the same knife again. I like it that much that I'm willing to shell out the money to buy it again, and this time I'll get it in, in a camo pattern. As a matter of fact, the 283, you can order it directly from Buck and get it in different camo patterns. So hopefully uh, in the future, there'll be a knife review once again, maybe on my experience shopping uh, directly from Buck Knives or something like that. So I, I, I am not happy to lose the knife, but I look at it as an opportunity. Thanks for watching.